Hey everybody, my name's Chad and I'm the Senior Keeper of Birds and Herpetofauna here at Adelaide Zoo. Today I'm introducing you to our orange-bellied parrots and having a chat about how we look after them here at the zoo and what these animals need to survive out there in the wild. This is basically as well a similar sort of story in terms of housing for most of our birds here at the zoo. But I'll give you a little bit of an insight into that as we get to our housing at the zoo. But orange-bellied parrots are a really interesting parrot species. They're one that not many people have heard of before, but they're actually one of Australia's most endangered animals. They're about the size of a budgie, and these animals currently have a wild population of less than 50. So here at Adelaide Zoo, we currently have more in our care than are left in the wild, which is a pretty scary thought when you think about it. But the good news is for orange-bellied parrots, there's a lot of amazing work going on. Now, orange belly parrots belong to a group of parrots called neophemas. Neophemas are a really small little parrot. They tend to be found around open sort of uh, grassland areas, feeding on small bushes and weeds. In fact, one of their favourite food sources these days is introduced weed species in uh, agricultural paddocks. So you tend to find them feeding there. There are several species in Australia. All of them are small but the orange-bellied parrot stands out because of how endangered it is. Now, what makes, uh, what makes an orange-bellied parrot different from the other neophemas? As, uh, as the name suggests, would seem to be an orange belly. Unfortunately, though, it's not. Every single neophema has an orange belly. The one thing that makes them different is they've got a grass-green colour all over their body. Now, it makes these birds really difficult to spot out there in the wild because when you're only the size of a budgie and you're grass green and there's only 50 of them, that's a pretty difficult thing to spot. But that grass green colour is the thing that makes orange-bellied parrots different from the other neophemas that are found around Australia. Now, the history of orange-bellied parrots is really interesting because they're found on the southern coastline of the mainland of Australia, but they breed at the southwestmost tip of Tasmania. And they actually migrate across the Bass Strait down to that breeding site every single year. They're one of only three migrating parrot species in the entire world. Two of them are found here in Australia. So uh, the orange belly parrot, the other one is a swift parrot, which is also found uh, on Tasmania and migrates to the mainland. And then the other species is found in North America. It's called a thick-billed parakeet. But with the orange belly parrot, it's kind of an odd thing to uh, see a 50 gram bird flying across a thousand kilometer stretch of water, which is the Bass Strait. But the reason they do that is because they've been making that journey since before there was water there. So they were crossing that when there was a land bridge between Tasmania and the mainland of Australia. And that hasn't changed since, which is why you still find these little birds making that marathon journey. Now for them, the reason they do that is because being so small, when you breed in the middle of summer, you want to breed in the coolest possible spot in the whole of Australia, which for them happens to be the southwestmost tip of Tassie. So it's a long journey, but it's worth it for them when it comes to breeding. Now for their uh, physical features, these birds have got a very long tail, which means that they can change direction very fast in midair. So they're a very dynamic flyer, and they also are very lightweight. They only weigh somewhere in the realm of 30 to 60 grams and so they can not weigh, they don't weigh very much which means it doesn't take much energy for them to fly and so all of those things together make these birds a pretty dynamic little flyer out there in the wild so when it comes to caring for these animals in human care what do they need for an orange belly parrot it's a lot of seed these birds' favourite food is tiny, tiny little seeds which are found on the edge of salt bush, on those weeds. So we need to provide them with lots and lots of seed for them to eat. They also live in really dense uh, areas of vegetation, very low to the ground. So when you have a look at these aviaries, you'll notice that there's a lot of planting very low and in the middle of the aviary, and that gives them a lot of cover. So they feel safe and secure in that environment. Now the other really interesting thing for an orange belly parrot is because they breed in such a cool area, when our birds breed here in summer at Adelaide Zoo, it gets a little bit too warm for them 
in these outside aviaries. So we do all of our breeding in an off exhibit area, which has got evaporative coolers set up into the corridor. But there's one other thing that we do, and it's really, really interesting. We only started doing it two years ago. We installed a lighting system in the aviaries out in our breeding complex. And those lights start daylight savings uh, light hours two months ahead of when they actually start. And what we've seen is, is that it triggers our orange belly parrots to start breeding earlier. So all the little chicks in nest boxes are actually out of the nest boxes by the time we get to the hottest weather here in South Australia. So it's increased our survival rate of chicks here at Adelaide Zoo. Now what's good to know about this is that these birds have then gone on to other organisations which are further south. So around Melbourne and in uh, Tasmania as well, where they don't need that lighting system, but it doesn't affect their breeding timing. They actually line up with all the birds in that location based off the normal light cycles as well. So that's a really interesting thing that we've been able to do. We're able to actually trigger a breeding event when the weather conditions are best for us here in South Australia to produce the most chicks, which is really cool. And that's helped us produce many, many birds here at Adelaide Zoo. In fact, we're close to our 100th chick here at Adelaide Zoo now, which is something really to be proud of for a bird with so few left in the wild. Now, for these birds in their real world habitat, unfortunately, because it's found over such a large area, there's been a lot of impacts along the way. These birds like living and feeding in flat coastal uh, areas. And so when you think about it, that's also a really great area for people to build. And so a lot of the favorite feeding grounds of these birds historically have been taken over by residential or agricultural development. Now, in, when it comes to agriculture, these birds have learned to adapt in terms of uh, eating those weeds in paddocks. But with residential, Unless people set up nice gardens in their backyard with natural habitat, native species to that area, these birds have lost key feeding grounds. Now when you're a 50 gram bird, every single meal counts because to make that journey across Bass Strait, you need as much energy as possible. And so if you make that trip and you end up on that uh, the place in Victoria, for example, where you're used to going and finding food, if that feeding ground's gone, well, for these birds, unfortunately, that's a really big challenge. And so what we've been doing is working with different groups in Victoria, Tasmania. We've been able to set up areas which we know that there's food there for these birds if and when they do arrive from their migrations, which is something that's really important. Unfortunately, though, the main reason for the decline in this species isn't exactly known. There's still enough feeding grounds around that these birds should be able to find food. And there's no clear interference from, say, feral predators in a way that would uh, uh, that explain the decrease that we've seen in the population. And that makes it really hard to conserve a species when you don't know exactly the reason why it's not surviving out there in the wild. And so we're very lucky here in Australia, though, to have a large uh, amount of groups and organisations working on this. So we work very closely with a group of other zoos in breeding these animals. And at the moment, there's just under 600 of these birds in human care here in Australia, which is a fantastic thing to have because we know we can keep that species alive in our care. But we also work with state governments, so Victoria and Tasmania. We also work with uh, other groups of local bird watching volunteers, volunteers that go out and actually survey the birds in the southwest tip of Tasmania, and lots of other groups to make sure that we can set up as many opportunities to learn about these birds in their wild habitat. Now as part of that as well, we actually release birds back into the wild with tracking equipment on, so we can actually follow their progress and see what the birds do. Last year, Adelaide Zoo actually released five of these birds on the mainland in Victoria in partnership with a few other organisations. So we're doing as much as we can to find out what's going on with these birds. We've even now got orange belly parrots that are leaving Tasmania after being caught up by national parks rangers and flown in planes back to the mainland of Australia and then released on the mainland in, uh, in Australia, caught back up and flown back down to Tasmania in a plane to make sure that we've got birds making the journey and surviving because we need those birds out there in the wild. And so we're doing everything we can to help keep this beautiful species alive, which is something that we're very proud to be a part of here at Adelaide Zoo.